Hi everyone, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Meeple University. It is that time of the year again where we share you our top certain games of 2022. Yes, Happy New Year everybody. Yay, Happy New Year. Hopefully you've had great holidays, played a lot of games if that's what you want. And we are doing it differently from other people. And each other. And each other. And from our previous top 10 games of 20 whatever that we've done. Yes, so um, yeah, this is our opportunity to celebrate the games of 2022 uh, in our own specific ways. So <clears throat> I'll, be do I'll actually be doing what I did last year. Uh, I will be going through my overall top five games of the year. And then five other special mentions that particularly are in sorts of different genres because you know you could listen to me uh, reel off a whole list of Euro games in order of how interesting the interaction between players are because really if I did a top 10 that's most of what it would be but I think it's I always enjoy celebrating sort of the best in other styles you know lighter games sometimes things that you don't see that often so yeah I will be uh, going through 10 games a top five and then five others and um, you can think of them all probably as being equal tenth, perhaps. <laughs> so basically, Taryn's doing five... Sorry, I will be doing my five special mention. And then Taryn will be doing five special mention. And then I'll be doing my... Okay, I have top 20 games of 2022. Because there are literally so many games, so many great games that I'd like to include. So no more top, top 10 for me, it will be top 20 for me. Now, there's another reason for it. So because when it comes to making this video, I get slightly stressed. You know why? Because I have to pick 10. I was like, what should I do? There are so many great games out there. Even though those games are not mentioned in my top 20, doesn't mean those games are bad. So it's just that my preference of very, obviously very subjective of top 20 games. So I'm like, you know what, why do I have to choose 10? I can choose 20, I can choose 25 if I'm on, but I'll choose 20 plus five special mentions. Yes. <laughs> it's our channel, we can do what we want. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so for you, technically still 10 as you say. Yes. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do. Then again, if you want, you can Obviously, I've put timestamp there for some things, so uh, you can skip ahead, whatever, do whatever you like. But what we ask for you is please, please, please write in the comments. That will really be helpful. We want to hear from you. We want to hear feedback from you about our channels, about what games you want us to cover. We do how to play Station Suite, and then we've got live plays on the weekend, almost every weekend. And we've got Henry joining us as well from late last year. So that was addition to Mipo University. And Henry's focusing on more of the solo game, solo playthrough, and also the more of a war game and not all, but more some of the war games and D4X games. All right. So without further ado, let's Drum roll. proceed. Yes. And we're going to start with Stella's special mentions. So the first one is Valbara. So Valbara is a, a SN 2022 release that I picked up, but I think I picked up kind of like pre-production copy. So this is a smart card draft game. Check out our review for this one. We do have a review video for Valbara. And this is a smooth draft set collection game where other players' tableau affects your tableau and your scoring. Indeed. You like this one as well, Taryn? We'll see. Ah. <laughs> so that's basically is, is the game. So recommend it for uh, the cut draft and Tableau, you were trying to get it from me. And this is for my special mention for great filler smart draft. Flame craft. Now, I, I know that this is the game where people are like, oh, dragons. It's really cute. Hence, my special mention is for cute game. For the art. For the artwork and the cuteness and the thoughtfulness. So each shop has got its own, it's, it's really thoughtful, like there's a dragon 
sorry, there's a waiter, human waiter, for example, with a dragon that did creme brulee. It's actually showing on the front here. Yeah. Um, sort of uh, draped yes. over like the towel yes. and it's creme brulee, I think. Whoever, they may have built the whole game around someone thinking of that piece of art. Ah. Uh, for all we know. Could be, but it's really thoughtful and the dragon was there and then just rather than, you know, the, the fire that you do uh, to burn the top of the creme, creme brulee? Yeah, the, um, the dragon. torchy thing. The torchy thing, yeah. And it's just like a barbecue. It's, it's super, super cute. The game is fun. I feel like it's best in higher play accounts, but yeah, it's fun. So it's, it's, it's very thoughtful, very cute. Hence my second special mention. Next special mention is Fair's Empires. So this game is by Eric Vogel and this is by Sandcastle Games who brought out Vresicana. Mm -hmm. This is a light civilization game. So it is highly recommended for if you want to introduce or maybe it's for you, you haven't tried civilization board game, this is highly recommended to start off your journey of civilization games. Yeah, civilizations and um, tactical area. area control as well. I think it's probably one of the better gateway level games of that style out there. Absolutely. So most civilization games, I would think, I think all of them, it's medium to complex. And this simplifies a lot of things. It does have dice rolls, but this is how it's, it's really simple rules. There's only certain actions. And you can just, you know, build up your empire and complete objective from your hand. So we do have review copies, for, uh, review video for this one as well. Indeed. So, uh, first empires, gateway first civilizations. Empires. Now, this is the one that I really can't put into any categories, but I just mentioned it why. I enjoy Endless Winter, but because, as you can see here, Gulf Studios. So I am part of Gulf Studios Australia, so Gulf Studios in Australia which is publishing, co-publishing company, and Endless Winter is one of my games. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't include it, I'm just mentioning it quickly, Endless Winter, I enjoy it, but it's my own kind of like, I didn't inform in, in the designing, but we... You still have to recuse yourself from putting it on, uh, Any list. on a top list properly. But, yeah. uh, so it's not on the list, it's there. But it's a good, <laughs> but it's a good euro. Yeah, thank you. And one last one, don't have the physical game because somebody borrowed it from us. Is the awesome re-release game that is re-theme, Sky Mines. Yes, it's the uh, re-theme of Mombasa uh, from Alexander Fista, 2015, I think it came out. Minimal changes, um, mostly just a re-theme. I think this is like 99% the same with Mombasa. And so I would highly recommend if you like Mombasa, it's different themes, space theme, but the mechanics, the, the goodness is, um, is pretty much similar. It's still very much that big uh, brain melting, very interactive oh gosh, yes. type game uh, with a lot of forward planning. So uh, it's still a classic. It is a classic, I still enjoy it. I remember playing the first time of Sky Mines was uh, when I had COVID. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I was so lethargic and tired, but yeah, enjoy it. So those are my special mention for this year, 2022. Mm -hmm. And now on to Taryn's special mention. All right, so these are my five special mentions. Uh, you can think of them all as kind of being equal 10th on my list. And these are... Yeah, these are all in different styles and they're all kind of the top of their style. They're things I really think deserve to be uh, acknowledged for the year. So one of these, our first overlap, <laughs> is Valbara. Valbara! And I always like to acknowledge a, you know, there's a lot of what I essentially call filler card games out there. Lots of games that don't have any more or much more than a deck of cards. Uh, they play in a relatively simple way, and because there's, yeah, there are a lot out there and they don't get a lot of attention, but there are some that have really nice, interesting decisions to be made, and I think Valbara is really the one that meets that this year. It does have the feeling of a light Citadels 
That's true. To some extent. With simultaneous card selection. Yep. You're simul instead of drafting, you're simultaneously choosing cards that will give you special powers that resolve in an order. And that order is also the order in which you're drafting cards from the table trying to make a set. And as you said, you can either score points from your own set. There are some that score off neighbours. It's just really clever. And it's, you know, it's light. You can teach it quite quickly. Uh, and you could bring it out as a filler in any situation. So, yeah, I think... Um, yeah. Really do recommend this for the light card filler sort of game. There's actually one more uh, cleverness in this one. With the card draft, there's two rows. So you're drafting on the bottom row, but the next row that you are going to draft the next round yep. is already out. Yes. That's, that's really that's really great. That's really And thoughtful. there's a couple of cards that let you uh, swap from row to row. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there you go. So, oh, Barra. The next one is in the category, in the bingo category intellectual bingo, um, also known as almost every roll and write. <laughs> yeah, everyone plays the same set of cards. And I know this has got a lot of love this year. <coughs> very good game from AG, uh, Guild of Merchant Explorers. Yep. It's a very clever use of the everyone playing the same cards mechanism. Um, if it weren't for the fact that you were placing pieces and taking them off every round, it could be a roll and write. Uh, but it also introduces, I like the way it introduces individual powerful cards. Just lets players do their own thing. And it, it gets added each round. Yes. Yeah, it gives you, what, it, what I really like about this as well, because you see every card each round, um, it emphasizes the importance of sequence in gaming decisions. It's something that I always really like, timing, I like games where you've got interesting timing questions. And in this, you know what's going to come. You don't know what order it's going to come. And deciding what is, you know, are you going to take a, a bet on it coming in the perfect order at the, at the cost of it losing something, it's just fun. And it's just really fun. It's a pretty solitary experience, mm. but it is, um, it's got a really nice decision. In a way, it's, uh, it's not, it's not cartographers, but... This, this, what cards gonna come out feels uh, in that yeah. way. That's a bit like cartographers, thrashing it maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Plus you're making a map, so it's very. Cartographic. You like map? Taryn likes yeah. map. So yeah, no, that is a, it's a really well put together game. That one. Agree. All right, third one in this list. From is the same also from publisher. AEG, Wormholes, and what I. So what I really like about this game is it's very it's innovative and it puts a new spin on pick up it's really a new spin on root building and pick up and deliver. Now the closest thing I can think to this is on the underground mm -hmm. in the way that you're building roots and then moving along it. Um, it's a very simple you move three steps each turn and you're just trying to go to places where you pick up cards and go to the planets where you drop them off. Pick up and deliver. Yep. Uh, but as you move out, you can start making pairs of wormhole tokens that anyone can use. The root building part of it. Yes. So it lets you move quickly around the board. It gets you in the mindset of thinking, all right, what's the best place for me to put a wormhole link that someone else is going to use a lot? And uh, <coughs> that yeah. is, it's, an, it's a really new twist on root building. The know. first option, so the first few turns are usually really slow, yeah. but then once those pair of wormholes starting to pop up, you just like jump from one to another. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I that's I think it's really innovative. I really enjoy playing it. It also has little bits of set collection on cards, so that it's not all about the roots. You have to think about a few things. So yeah, really well put together from Peter McPherson, who uh, put together Tiny Towns as well which was also pretty innovative. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good on them for that. It's, it's now or never from Red Dragon Games. Indeed. Obviously Ryan Lockett. Yes, so this was the third in the Above and Below Near and Far series. And for me, this was... If you... I put it in the category of sort of big, open, sandboxy Euros. So it's not that full sandbox narrative like uh, Sleeping Gods, which of course was his from last year. This is the sort of one where you can go and 
explore and do lots of things and do whatever, kind of do whatever you want. And it is a bit of a solitary experience in that way. Um, but it's really intriguing. You've got the little storylines to do. You can go and fight enemies. You can build your own kind of like engine building tableau as well. Yep. And it had some really interesting uh, decisions to be made in terms of trying to get your incomes. The whole game was about income. It was really a snowball on income because income let you get the money, which let you get more income, and then your final score was mostly income as well. And then items, a collection of items is basically yeah. money. Exactly. So it, it was all, there was so many times where you had to try to work out the way of, of just getting exactly what you needed before the end of the round, and I found that to be really quite fun. It was a long game. No doubt. Um, <laughs> it was a long game indeed, yeah. But it was a good game. And you mentioned that before. I really did enjoy the... It was a bit different as well. Your income... Still you going. Had, you had income as ways of getting different items. But then the only things you could do with those items was cash them in in different combinations for money. Kind of like state collection items for good combinations of money. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that I think... Um, of all, the, of all the very solo feeling Euros, this to me was the top one. The last one of my equal 10th special mentions, uh, and I, I don't know if the cover has changed because it's actually a prototype. I've been waiting to put this in a list for a couple of years since we played <laughs> this prototype. Uh, Masters of Mutanite. So this is a game that is, uh, it's a deck build engine. So it's kind of in the clank mindset where you've got the the deck that drives your actions, but then you've got a board on which you're doing actions. And it's a lot, it's kind of a cartoonish battle game. Um, you move around, wanna, as, as you move around with your cards, you either go to spaces and pick up the upgrade cards that are there, and that lets you build a stronger deck, or you move to where other people are and attack them, or you move to near where other people are and throw stuff at them. <laughs> and this is like throwing telephone poles and ice cream Trees. trucks across oh, the board. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's fun. And you think... I had fun doing the shot and sweat for this one. Indeed. Um, it's, it combines a lot of really good things. So it takes a, a light clank style of deck build and it combines it with a few ways of going about your, your tactics and um, battling each other, but, but it just presents it in a really fun way. You know, you can leave water in a space and then throw a telephone pole at someone in that and they get electrocuted more <laughs> because they're standing in water. Yep. I mean, you take the mechanism side of it out and that's just really fun. And it's out 2022. It was final. yeah, it was uh, fulfilled in 2022. So I think this was uh, a really fine example of, of that mechanism. And yeah, good on them. So Masters of Mutanite. Yeah. So uh, that is it. That is your uh, special mention. Those are my five special mentions. Valbara, Guild of Merchant Explorers, Wormholes, Now or Never, and Masters of Mutanite. Uh, I think they were really at the top of the pile in their styles of games this year. Well, this is our top games. And how we're going to do it is that I'm going to start with my 20 to 16. Yes. And then it's going to be my... 15 to 11, yep. and then 10 to 6. And then we'll go back and forward doing our top fives. Yeah, so please be patient. So I'm going to quickly try to quickly do this, and then some of this might be double up. Ah. Oh, I've got a while <laughs> yeah, to wait actually now. Might be double up. All <laughs> right, number 20. This is paint roses. There's stuff in it now. I put it side up. I think I just <laughs> put stuff from the... Insert. Anyways, Paint Roses by Northside Games Studio. This is a limited communication puzzle deduction game that I think is really smart. So you're basically cooperatively working to solve the uh, location, the placement of tiles so that other people can guess it by putting certain tiles on the main board and then putting the clues on what sort of, how many of those conditions are achieved by putting the cubes on the on the main board. Yeah, it's really you <coughs> you by trial by semi trial and error mm. uh, make a guess, see what comes out, and then start to guess each other's 
uh, clue cards. Yes. I first played this as prototype at Gen Con 2019. All the way back then. All the way back. So it looks different then. Oh, it's not as pretty as this. Still, um, still this theme, Alice in Wonderland theme. And I was, I remember I was impressed. I was like, oh, wow, this is, this is amazing. This is just, I, I find it really smart. And I found that for me, puzzle deduction is, well, I'm not as good as Tara here. So there's still puzzle to be solved here. While Tara's like, oh, it's so easy. That's not fully the case. Okay. But, uh, that's usually the case. Okay, that's paint process. So there you go. Very nice componentry in this one as well. Uh, big acrylic tiles. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Number this 19. 19, Jiangnan, Life of Gentry. Yes. This so is a prototype. Prototype that we've got here. Yeah. So this was, we covered this prototype version of the game. And this is a Euro game with really smart end of round and end of game objective that is moving around. Yeah, it's essentially, <laughs> it is essentially a, a five action Euro, very general five action Euro, uh, but it's unsolvable because you, at the start of the game, there's six boats down the bottom of the board and whoever has the majority, each round these boats, so these boats are where you go and do your worker placement and then each round they move along and when one falls off the end, uh, whoever has the majority on it gets to choose which of the two scoring objectives that are there will score for everyone. Exactly. And then the new boats that come in have scoring objectives and whoever has the majority on those at the end of the game, because uh, they don't drop off the board, is the only one who scores them. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so you've got to time everything. Um, and each one, I mean, that means that everyone's working towards different goal each round in each game. So it makes it really, really interesting because then to achieve that goal, you got to do different things as well, yeah. which you got to travel and um, do a few other, like five different actions that are really, like you have to tie them together to achieve that objective. A really smart game. But you have way. to try to time them so that you have the majorities on the right boats. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not going to score for you. And I think this is... This, this was quite close to my list. Mm. Um, spoiler, it, it <laughs> didn't quite get yeah, into my yeah. top five, but it was really close. And, and this is by Moadis Design Game Design, yeah. which had their games in your last year's top five, which is Mini Express. Yeah, yeah. I think there's so many. Um, you know, let's say there's no way you can solve the game. There's no way you can say that one strategy is overpowered versus the other because you just have to get into a very simple fight to determine what actually scores. And yep. I really like that. Same here. And number yes. 18 is Terra Nova. Thames, Thames and Cosmos and Capstone Games as well. Somewhere I think they got the English version and this is the German version. We have English rules, rules printed. And of course, Latin name. Yes. So this is a lighter version of Terra Mystica. And so there's Project Gaia. We, were, we are more familiar with Project Gaia than Terra Mystica. And well, this is kind of like a better version of Terra Mystica as well, but lighter. So it still have the find the nice bits that you can use power and cycle the power. You, when you pass first, you get to choose the bonus tiles. And this is the kind of like area control, expanding your territory where being next to opponent, rewarding you, rewards you with cheaper upgrades or building. And the, for two players, then the neutral player just basically puts a house there and it gives you that cheaper upgrade. Yes. It's all about it's, the map. It takes the, map. the cult tracks yeah. out of it or the tech tracks. Those are gone. Uh, it's all about basically Terra Mystica, the map only. You can see the artwork is also lighter. And if you feel the, the itch of Terra Mystica, Project Gaia, Terra Nova is the way to go, I think just simplifies things and introduce newer player to Terra Mystica and Project Gaia. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for tracking. Uh, keep track of that. It is uh, what Taryn has brought out before as Taryn's special mention. The Guild, the Guild of No Chance Explorer. It's a very long title and for the reason of what Taryn mentioned. This is... <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Next. So this card play 
it's just really smart. So for those who doesn't like the roll and write where each player has got their own set of dice to roll and this is like kind of like everyone gets affected by the same card and I really like that. For those who doesn't like roll and write, this actually is good in that way that everyone is getting affected by the same set of cards. But they have their own special power as well, which is I would say equally powerful that they can do to kind of like branch out their actions a little bit. Yes. Number 16 is Woodcraft by Vladimir Suchi and Ross Arnold. It's a uh, Essence Spiel release and this has got a really smart Rondo action selection. I think that's impressed me the most. Uh, kind of like a ro special Rondo action selection that encourages you to pick the type of action that no one else is using by giving more bonus. Yeah, yeah. I actually think of it as an um, <coughs> overly fancy action line. Correct. Kind of like Tribes, Dawn of Humanity had. Or like third and even like, oh, you don't use that card, you get more times. And then that means that it's more rewarding to choose certain things because it's get, it has more bonuses. Yes. So Woodcraft, it is, uh, don't be fooled by the, um, by the art. I mean, obviously this is Vladimir Suchi, you wouldn't expect that to be a light game. But the art's quite cute. Everything else is cute. Artwork is cute. It's just that it's not a light game. It's kind of like medium crunchy Euro game. And... Indeed. It's this, all about. Yes. It's all about um, making wood work, essentially. It is. It is. You have to manage the resources, which are dice, and you have to manipulate the dice into exactly the right pips by cutting one die into two small dice. Yes. Gluing two small dice together. Not physically cutting mm -hmm. your dice, but with gluing a one and a three into a four. Correct. So I spending think. Spending a glue token. That's my next point. That was actually what I like. Second most, like the first one is Rondo. That's just really smart. I haven't seen something like that out there before. All right, so now we go to 15 through 11. My list. Oh, still. Yeah. All right, number 15, we've got Lacrimosa. Lacrimosa is a Euro game. It's about Mozart and his last work, and we are trying to complete the work. And this is a Euro game which is really smooth in execution. It's really elegant. You draw a certain number of cards, you play it above, and you play below as well. So, sorry, you play above for the immediate action, action yeah. and you play below for the income at the end of that round. So there's like four slots, four or five slots, four slots, and one set slot, that's the end of the round. And really is there's only a certain number of actions. Um, I do enjoy games that is really straightforward like that. And okay, on your turn, play a card. Well, how just make everything else is seems less complex. Yes. And just quite easily playable by anyone that is, you know, just intro to Euro game. And yeah, it's a very yes. it's very accessible in that way. It is a typical it is a five action Euro. It is Two of them are get cards. One of them is activate a card you've already gotten. Uh, one of them is a travel map, of course. The other one um, is area control. And the other one is area yeah, control. Yeah, it's very straightforward. It looks pretty com complex, perhaps, when you see the back of it. Yep, yeah, Euro and it is heavy. It's beautiful as well. The components has got the player boards. It's really good, double layered, and looks like a book, like a music book. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, well, I obviously, this is my top 20, so I recommend it for that so euro games that euro gamers that like it's smooth actions what's in the number 14 Taren? it is a revive so this is essence 2022 release as well almost didn't get it but at the end i managed to snatch a copy this has got campaign mode which kind of like adding rules to the game but this is a a few action games so on your turn you do two actions and you can choose from Five oh, actions, five five actions, actions yep. and the it, I think it just makes it really simple. Okay, your turn. You do two actions, same one or different, and move to the next player. And there are some free actions you can do as well, or you can hibernate, which means that like, you refresh some cards. And it's really tight when you're trying to get the resources as well. So play cards usually when you get the resources, and you can manipulate certain things. You get special power, player powers. And the points you get, you draft, or you can just get 
randomly at the start and that determines your points so you can focus on certain strategies but then you have to work for it not only to get what needs to achieve but also to score the points itself by getting the artifacts yes it's a tight little map sort of game yes so it's a big uh, hex map and you're really fighting to put buildings in the most strategic locations to go up on tracks and to uh, use those buildings as jumping off points for other buildings or places to put meeples for engine building. Yeah, yeah. And I do like the card play. You can either slot it, talking about Lacrimosa and it's slotting cards. It's a different type of slotting. So it's actually not. It's pretty <laughs> much the same. So you slot it. It's one of the action in Lacrimosa is basically your action. You have to slot cards. Yep. This is one of the actions. You slot cards above, get resources at the top, at the top. or slot it the bottom and then get different type of resources at the bottom and you have to refresh it when you hibernate and then you cycle your cards to be used again. Yes. You get extra cards, you can get extra cards, it's kind of like deck building bit. You can kind of like trash a card and there's a lot to, to like about this one I think. And this is Terracotta Army. So uh, Terracotta Army, I think, or pick it up at Gen Con. I don't know whether it's Gen Con or Essence release doesn't matter it's a great game it has got this it's not rondel but it's kind of like worker worker placement where it moves every round yeah there's a wheel, a wheel yeah. there's three interlocking wheels and you get to do everything in one spoke of it uh, with a worker placement but then you can also place <coughs> more workers to go to the same place that's already been occupied yeah as long as it's bigger yes sorry not more bigger uh, worker so yes. yeah, Grande Worker. Grande style. Worker, that's it. And it's really probably one of the most interactive Euro game out there, I would say, because that is really interactive. And there's also the other part where you build your Terracotta Warriors, and that's area it's, control. It's one big tile placement puzzle. Yes, so yes. even though you're placing minis, it's actually a tile placement puzzle. And groups of matching ones will be an area control or an area a number majority uh, different types of things that you place will give you points in different ways and it is uh, it's quite tight there's lots of different ways to score off that tile placement puzzle and on your play board as well it's also a, sort of like an engine building puzzle where you want to make certain actions more powerful the next turn i love it <coughs> wow we've seen this before Number now 12. or never for number 12. I used to play a lot of RPG sandboxy games, so this naturally is enjoyable for me. Like last year I did Sleeping Gods as part of my top 10. Was that last year or the year before? I think the year before. I think you jumped in a year ahead of everyone else, I think. Okay, know. yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> I, think I think it so was too. very big in the top 10s last year, and I yeah. think you jumped in a year early. I think Australia... Because we got it in like December mid-December yeah yeah in Australia we received it about December Jan uh, not January December November anywho so, anywho this is now or never I think I like this one uh, the best out of the the three sequel the above and below and near and far near and far thank you although near and far is fun for the campaign this is this is really smart you can do pretty much whatever while engine building -y. And it's, it is a long game, so get ready for it. And then the beautiful artwork and designed by Ryan Lockett. Yep. And there is a little campaign in this one as well. Oh, yes. Um, and some exploratory content. 11. Is come together, you and me. Not really, but, but yes, really. Yeah. <laughs> come together. So every time I look at this, that song pops in my head. This is by Chili Fox Game, picked up from Essence, so Essence 2022 release. And this is uh, basically a hippie music festival where you trying to get the, the stage, trying to recruit the star or new newbie performers, get the, the dance happening. But it is all done in a very smart way of worker placement and activating workers. So it's not really the useful worker placement. You don't get it straight away. You need to activate it still. Yeah, when you you go to a location to essentially draft the card, um, but when it's only when someone activates that location, everyone gets the cards, and the more people are there, the more benefit everyone who's there gets. So it becomes this interesting timing. Yeah, and the neutral player for two-player game 
it's also great. I thought before playing it, mm, is it going to be as good as four or five player games? It is, because it's it's really, you can also sort of part predict what's going to happen. It's yes. actually checking a chance of, you know, it's going to happen or not, and then try to take advantage out, um, of it, as if there's three, four, five players. Indeed. It's really nice, and um, it's really, I think it's quite quite thematic as well. It's quite fun. It's like, oh, it's music festival. You have to get the meeples. You have to, you know, get a booth. You get points. You have, you know, you have to match certain, like, please certain type of people by well, meeple color and so on. So yeah. come together. There we go. So that was 15 through 11. So I've got one more, lots of me, and then we start back and forth doing our top games of 2022. Yes. Number 10 is another Essen Spiel 2022 release, Rise. Rise is basically a track advancement game, but you use unique worker placement. Yes, it's got a little, uh, it's got a little worker placement. It's not a competitive one. It's no. actually really a money management thing, mostly. Um, you can choose an action space at the, towards the left for free. Or you can choose an action space towards the right, gain the benefit of a whole lot more cards, but have to spend money. And each round, those cards refresh, so it might be the same track and it might be different track. And each track is actually a small, smaller board, and that can be flipped on the other side to add even more replayability to the game. Yes, as they say in there, there's I think a, there's a thousand and twenty-four oh, wow. combinations yeah, yeah, yeah. that you could have. And this feels a bit like Hadrian's Wall in terms of you combo things together. So you advance this track and this track advance you in another track and that track advance you on this other track. So yes. in that way. And it's it's really, I don't know, it's really tied really well together. And it's really tied especially because you can only have five money. So you want want to just, you have to spend the money to get the benefit that round, or you can upgrade, you can have up to 10 money, and then there's other ways towards the end of the game maybe that will turn money into points. Yep, there are some tracks that give you ongoing benefits, there are some that give you ongoing penalties. Uh, yeah, just lots lots of little mm. different things. Yeah. It's got a roll and ridey feel because yeah. so much of it is just track mm. advancement. Um, Love it. But it's good, <laughs> it's good. Rice. Hamlet, the village building a game. So this was fulfilled this year. This is the last edition that I have here. And it has such a such a unique resource management. So I wouldn't say it's like Scythe, but the resource, so we're similar with Scythe, resource you don't actually take with you, you leave it on the board. But instead of having it on your tile like Scythe, this is common, so everyone can use it as long as you can link those resources to the tile that you are going to use it for. Yes, so. but whoever puts the resources there does get a benefit for doing so as well. Yep. Yes, yes. So, so is by benefit. producing resources, you get points and contribute to the economy that somebody else can use. Yes. So in that way, I know this is probably a long shot, Seastead was one of our top games when it was out. So it was a two-player game. You kind of like want to calculate very, sometimes very tightly, tightly, when you are producing the resources, make sure that your opponents can't really use that straight away, or you want to just let them use it straight away as long as you still have, there are still enough resources for you to do your action next turn. So that sort of kind of like feel I really love. Yeah, I'll tell you. The, I'll tell you the one that it is um, most similar to is probably Red Outpost. Um, it had that collectivist feel. That was yes. a communist themed game, yeah. so it was all about uh, producing resources for everyone. And Hamlet, yeah, it's producing resources for the town. Everyone building the town collectively, but competitively. Yeah. So I think that is just that's really smart how they do it. And this is a signed copy uh, mm -hmm. also by the designer um, David yeah, that I met. Up. At Essen, number eight, it's Wormhole, which Taryn has mentioned. It has got such a smart root building that I haven't haven't seen before. It's you're gonna have to play. It. You have to play this. It's quick. It's fun. It is really simple. It is quite you know it's it's quite gateway ish because it's so simple. Um, with set collection, contact fulfillment, not not really contact fulfillment, but 
pick up and pick deliver. Up and that deliver. was what's going to stretch. But it's light, simple fun. As yeah, well. yeah, and it was. And it makes me, it makes pick up and deliver fun. Yes. That's not a mechanism that you I struggle to find that mechanism fun. A lot because it's time. usually longer, and this is really quick and simple. Oh. Number seven is a tiwa. This is by Wolf Rosenberg, farming ish game. It's about fruit bats, and this is one of those that you take something to upgrade and then oh, to build and then you leave some sort of bonus that you enjoy the benefit and this just you need to strike the balance of all your tracks and then build them because then you might lose some things otherwise i've always um i always felt this felt like a less polyomino -y version of face for odin to some extent because you spend a lot of a lot of what you've got to do is spend time getting places to put things. So it's like going out and getting the islands and the longhouses and things. But instead of having to rearrange things like polyominoes on them, you get one that can hold X amount of fruit bats mm. and Y amount of things. So you're doing that, then you're getting the fruit bats and the the various trees, trees and things like that. Fruits. And trying to make them all work in harmony in a very typical uh, Uwe Rosenberg farm. Yes, yes, style. yes, yes. I love Fist of Odin, but it it's a little tad too polyomony ish for me, which yeah. with spatial rotation. And this is just a fun part, and then it's it's a more simpler one, and then it's also building those polyomino spaces that you can add resources on. That's yeah. fun. It also gives you a lot of options. I think there's about 30 worker placement spaces, which is you know, the other thing that makes me think of a Feast for Odin because that has yeah. so many different uh, spaces. Which I do. like and because it's not that tight, I feel, and that's why you kind of like, eh, it's not that tight, but for me, yes, I options. Like I like that criticality of getting the, uh, getting the roof reeds at the right time in uh, Agricola. That's it. That's Adiwa. Atiwa Adiwa. Number seven. Number seven. Number six. Is on loan. So yes. Wayfarers of the South Tigris. So this is by Garfield Games. And this is the, is the fourth of the directional It's the game third of the, it's the seventh of the games and the third of the directions. That's it. So this has got track advancement game and really smart card play that you play on your tableau that isn't like anyone else, don't you think? It's a big, big tableau builder. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it, it is... I don't think I've seen that many different steps of tableau all have to work together. And each... Kind of like each turn, each round, you gotta... When a tinker hat on your track, there's a lot of points there, a lot of bonuses to get. Each, each time you gotta have to think of... Make sure you have enough certain points to actually get it. And... I think the smart bit is also, it's almost like a worker placement where the worker actually stays out. Yes. And when you gain the card, then whoever that gets the card gets the workers. Yeah, it's got, um, mm. you know, it's a little bit like, it's, it sort of builds on what Raiders of the North Sea introduced, mm. I suppose, in that way. Yeah, so that's it. So uh, highly recommended. So that is... Six to all ten. highly recommended. Six all, to ten. All recommend. All these games are great. So that is six through ten. All right, top five time. So we will go. We'll go back and forward. Five down to one. This is the exciting part, right? Oh, all are exciting. Come on. Sometimes it's so hard to pick. Not sometimes. It's always hard to pick the top twenty. And first, you need to pick top twenty, and then order them. Yes. It's always hard to sequence them. If we did this tomorrow, these would pro my five would probably be in a different order. Oh, no. <laughs> um, but this is what they were today. Yeah. So this is what goes in the record book. Your number five. My number five, Trekking Through History. Ding, 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 ding. So for me, this is, if you look at games that are gateway in their mechanism, this really ticked all the boxes this year. Um, very, very fine game without very much going on. And so it's got a time track. It's probably the lightest game out there that has a time track. You know, they can be, they can be clumsy mechanisms sometimes, but it works well here and it's the perfect way to introduce time tracks to anybody. And then from that point on, it's all, 
it's drafting cards which have three implications. The card has a time cost, the time of the card has rewards that you're using to fill up a track to get points, and everyone has different tracks, and you have a different track every round, which I really like. I think that's really clever and keeps each round fresh. And you're trying to draft cards in chronological order so that you can get more points for your, uh, for your sequences, because the longer the sequences are, the more points you get. And so you've got to weigh up all of those competing mm. things. And that double draft as well, you always like that as well. Yeah, yeah, it does have a double draft, sort of like Cascadia and mm -hmm. things like that. Then you add to that that, <coughs> you know, thematically it is... Not the museum, the board game. <laughs> yeah, it's basically got a whole lot of historical events. It's got like 108 historical events. They're all illustrated and described, which is really good. Um, it can easily be rethemed. It's really rethemable. Yeah. I, and I do really hope it gets... I think this is the sort of game that if it really, uh, if it really takes off... It could be become a standard sort of gateway, and you could retheme it to individual countries, to individual anything that has 108 different things happening in different years. Uh, you could make a version of this. Please do watch if you want how how to play video for this. Mm -hmm. It is you can see how smooth it is. It also has a really simple extra module where one extra action or extra. Um, ability or rule change mm. comes into effect in each round. Uh, very simple to add on to the game once you're familiar with the base game. Yeah, great replayability here. This is a, a very good game and my number five. Now my number five is Splendor Duel. This is a two-play version of well-known, well-loved games, if you love it, Splendor Duel. And, and this is a obviously two player version of Splendor that is really t has got tight tug of war between two players. It actually has, is a little bit more complex than Splendor. Which is quite surprising. Normally yeah. you go down in box size, you go down in player count, and it, it might simplify things mm. a little bit. But this one, it adds a, just that extra wisp of complexity. It works really well, two players, because it really, you know, what you draft. So the um, the way you get the the chips, the gem, yep. you don't actually just get it. You have to look at the common board, and you have to get it in the vertical, horizontal, or diagonal order. Yep. And taking it. taking yep. it off a grid. Taking off the grid. Which is it's a nice scale down to two players because now it's what I always find with two players. You need to have something in there that makes it hate draft <laughs> makes it a hate draft yeah. so now not only are you taking chips but you can take them you in such the a chips, way that yeah. it blocks mm. your opponent's best chance at chips yeah best and then there are other things that are quite powerful which gives reward opponents with scroll which is which opponent can use basically to to get a get a chip. free chip yeah so really awesome game standard as well I played maybe too many of Splendor, so this is like a, it's good, refreshing <coughs> things. And it introduced the pearl. That's actually the one that you not easily can get, and you you can't engine build. So it's not you can you still draft the chips once you build your engine of gems. So that doesn't make make it up absolute. Uh, yes. Once you have engine built your gems, there you go. Yep. Splendor jewel. And it adds two extra ways to win as well. So oh, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, can, yeah. You can win off a single of column of engine building or you can win off certain cars that have chests on them. So it sort of really does well what... well done. It does what Seven Wonders Duel did with mm -hmm. the three win conditions. Yep, which yep. Is, yeah, very good. Number four. So this one we have seen before. Terracotta Army is my number four. And I think I did actually mostly discuss what I liked about it last time. That's true. Uh, so it's, watch previous segment. Yeah, uh, I think it is the, uh, there were a number of different ways to engine build and work towards, you know, you could get lots of large workers, so you had lots of choice of actions, or you could get lots of incomes, um, but it ended up being a really tight battle on that tile placement, the army warrior placement board. And what I particularly liked about how that worked was there were certain army, army men types that got more or less powerful as the game went on. Like there was one that would score a lot of points for looking across the, 
the field and being a long way away from someone else. And that's going to be easier to score towards the start of the game. But then towards the end, you want to fight for the little area controls in the groups. And <clears throat> there are specific ones whose powers let you do that better. There are ones that, yeah, there's just lots of, there was about, I think, what was it, eight or ten different things. There's also a little mechanism in there where you've got to have certain tools flipped the right side up to get an extra bonus. Mm, and that's right, And timing yeah. all of that. Yes. There was a lot of, this is what you'll always hear, and if you've heard any of my Euro reviews this year, I like things where the timing is interesting and where okay. my choices can impact, my choices impact other players and what other players do impacts me. And, and, yeah, and the, the tile placement in here is like that. really offered that. It's like, and the resource is water, basically. <coughs> water and clay. Water and clay, sorry, just two resources. Yep. Four. My number four is decorum. So this is a cooperative puzzle deduction, another puzzle deduction, and has got scenarios. So you set up the rooms and you will move certain objects in and out, swap in that room, uh, or house or room, and you want to get to your objectives. So certain objectives like the room that must have yellow color or the room must have a painting of a modern type. So. Um, <clears throat> So you can only give limited clues to your opponents by saying, oh, yeah, yeah, I like that, or I don't like that, or I don't care about that. And each certain, after a few rounds, you can share one of your clues, and it, it works slightly different in two players and three and four players. So that is just fun. It's, it's the type of cooperative that no alpha player can take control. So everyone has got their piece of information in hand that no one else can control and needs that other player to make things work. <clears throat> you can't tell, oh, you have to do this, you have to do that, you can't do that. Because it's limited communication as well. That stops it from happening. And in the same, same way that Hanabi, I mean, it's a different game com completely, the same way that Hanabi works with cooperative, because there's no way you can take control. There's no way one person can take control. There we go. And Just blabbering about this. <laughs> and I will say what I really like <clears throat> is it's taken a um, it's taken a, a vignette of life. You know, the, the funny Oh yes. The funny thing that is the fact that everyone Flat is gonna mates. have a fight when they try to first set up the decorations in their house. In their new and house, they turn yeah. that into a really functional game. Yeah. So yeah. That in its own right is really clever. So we will have our uh, we have our, we will have our reviews of decorum, so check it out. So Find out more why I like this so much, why it's in my top five game. Number three, so we've seen this one recently. Come together. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, again, we come back to interaction and timing, and this has a lot oh, of that. The timing, oh my, yeah, totally. And you know, what I really enjoy here, the things that make this game stand out. So it's fundamentally a card drafting game. Yeah, I remember we we were playing it at a party recently, and they were playing Porte on the next on the next table over, and they were kind. I sort of saw them as being the same game in that respect. They were just card drafting euros, where you're trying to build up a a set of cards that worked well together. But the way you draft them here, you've got so many things to think about. So you've got to uh, you choose the card. You choose an immediate bonus that is attached to the card. You've got four tracks that you have to advance on, and they're different ways of getting points. And you only you have to choose the one that's connected to that track, because each of the tracks is connected to two of the types of cards. Then on top of that, uh, you've got to go. To, you want to go to the places where lots of players are, because even if you don't like the card you get more track advancements if you're there in a space with lots of players. Mm. So you've got to build all of these things together. Then you've got... They other, all come together. They all come together. <laughs> then you've got other timing things to think about with uh, when do you choose to activate because whoever activates gets a small additional bonus. And it's a small part of the overall action, but it might be exactly what you need. You've got to manage a stack of 10 worker discs as well. Oh, yes. Because they keep cycling through. So and you've got to get them in the right place. So there's, there's lots of 
tricky individual and collective timing things to think of. And that's before you get into the, the fun parts of getting the right meeples for the right things. So there's, there's a surprising number of moving parts in this game. But you know, the fun part also trying to anticipate which part of the board is going to be activated and yeah. then you want to just, although you don't like the actions or the benefit in there, you want to jump in so you can advance your track, which is really important. And this game plays up to six players, which is very rare for a Euro game. I haven't played it at six, I have played it at five. And you know, other than the fact that it's a little bit longer before you get a, a chance to make your choice again, um, it still works really well mm -hmm. at those high player counts, which it's very rare to get as well Euros as that play five as and two. six. Yeah. So, yeah, no, very good game, this one. Um, that comes highly recommended by me. That is my number three. And then now it is my number three is Teletum, another board and dice favorite of mine this year. Yes. Teletum is by the uh, the duo of yes. Simone, sorry. Daniel the Daniel the, the Cine and Simone and Simone Luciani. Thank you. I almost got the name swapped sometimes somehow. <laughs> so this is a dice drafting game. This is a dice drafting. Really, those two. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> Um, but it's the way that it's done that we, I think I like the most out of the other dice drafting thing from this duo. Because it's one of those that you can plan ahead, you have to plan ahead. You, there's, you know, there's a second choice of the dice, dice drafting. So you, so okay, the dice roll and those dice are in the common supply. And one person at a time, you uh, draft, draft the dice, and the dice is roll match on the actions. So you uh, draft the action and the number of actions, yep. and you do the action so that you wanna aim to certain objectives. This is one of those that is this end of round objective. So each round, so that means each game would be different. People are uh, going towards different different things each round and each game. Yep. And you can just calculate, okay, this one is giving me this and this and this point. So it kind of like simplifies the uh, point counting part of the game because then it's just easier to plan for me. Because you're the planning ahead. If it's too complex, I was like, ah, <laughs> you still have to plan. You still have to do the actions and try to combo it and chain it together. They are still limited things in your board that you can't hoard certain things, which is great, makes it great. Very good. Karen's very silent, so I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> my number two. So my number two is on loan, so I can't pick it up. Uh, and it uh, it simplifies things way down from all these ones I've ever said. It's the simplest, simplest one here, and it is kites. And uh, kites for me, I put it in the same category as Drop It and Illusion uh, in terms of being games that are a little bit different, a little bit, you know, little bit dexterity or, I mean, Illusion isn't dexterity, but it's, it's just this simple little game that you can pull out at almost any social occasion, teach it instantly. And real and time. everyone will have a lot of fun. Cooperative real time. It's a cooperative real time. The game has solved. You know, it, it's the best real time game, Ever that you've excluding played. like word games and things where you're trying to achieve a certain, do the most you can in a time. This is the best real time game there is because there's very few rules, and that means you don't have to stop and ask each other the rules all the time. The game, is, and then it's also a turn based game, and it, it melds turn based and real time together real time together which is not really easy i think yeah fundamentally the game is keep the six hourglasses from running out and there are six different colors and when you play a card that has two hourglasses on them those are the ones you have to flip and if you play a card that has one hourglass you have to flip that one or you can flip the white one which doesn't mm -hmm. have any cards and that's pretty much it the hourglasses range between half a minute and six minute. oh, it's six minutes. I jumped ahead. Uh, half a minute minutes. and two minutes. Two minutes. And the so game yeah. plays up to six players. Yes. Um, we've played it at a couple of meetups mm. and it's just, it's a really fun game. It's got some cards that can make it more difficult as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's innovative. 
it's quick, it's fun, yeah, it's a, it's a brilliant release, Kites. My number two. This is Living Forest. Living Forest is, well, technically it was released in Germany in 2021, but I think it doesn't reach the other <coughs> area part of the world till 2022, early 2022. Mm -hmm. And it has won many awards. Yes. And this has got the Mystic Fail mechanic, if you are familiar with it. If you're not, it's a push your luck, draw your cards, your deck of cards, deck building as well, and then draw until you want to stop to get a more powerful action and get to collect certain icons to do your action. So you usually get two actions unless you reach certain points where, you know, you kind of like bust it and you do only one action. And the goal is to reach 12 of either 12 pi fire pieces, yeah. 12 plant or three 12 different trees. Different trees. And 12 points when you open your, when you push your luck. Yes. So just 12. So it's it's kind of like force you to try to generalize in a lot because some the way it is, it's you have to generalize. There's no way you cannot generalize because with the two actions, you um, usually can do one type of action each. So you have to do some other actions as well. You have to do two different actions yes. unless... Unless you've unlocked mm. something, which yeah. is quite expensive to unlock. Yeah. And then later on in the game, then you are specializing in one of those. You think that, okay, you look at the, the other opponents, very, it's highly interactive. You look at other opponents, what they are close to, you can also steal one of their, not, not actually, it's not going to affect them. You can steal the uh, three starting, those 12 that you need to achieve. Yeah. It, it could affect them if they're going for that. That's well, actually true. And that you can use to stop them from winning also. Yes. By and another interactive is that uh, the, the path the that you move around, that is the interactive part, but it's just so simple. I think it's so elegant. And then race to 12 of one of those three, and then which one it is. It's, I play on BGA as well. It's great on BGA. It just tracks everything. Great game. Mm -hmm. Living Forest. That's it. Living I think Forest. it wins. It deserves to win. They deserve to win. My number one, I tipped my uh, hand really, didn't I? Uh, <laughs> I did give the clue. Like, by uh, not, by not, talk, uh, not saying a lot about not a 10 game. Myself, yeah, to let him. So yeah. I <laughs> thoroughly enjoyed to let him. And this is actually going to sound like quite an understated review because there's nothing, there's not much new here. This is a five action euro. It's got a map. It's got a. Um, you know, it's got a track, it's got all the, the sorts of things, set collection, nothing really new. Um, it's got end of round scoring and things. Again, nothing really new there, different objectives that'll pop up. And dice drafting, as I say, these, it's pretty similar to what this design team often comes up with. Um, but the choices here are all really impactful and really interesting. So the, the dice drafting you mentioned before, uh, each die that you take, it's going to have a color, which tells you how many resources, which tells you what resource you get. It's going to have a number, which tells you how many of that resource you'll get. And it dictates what action the die is connected to. And the action points you'll get is equal to seven minus the number on the die. So you're going to get a lot of resources and not many action points or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Very, very satisfying chaining your actions together. Yes. It's got this interesting thing where all the actions are about getting stuff and then all of the spending stuff is free actions. Free action, yeah. Uh, and it's quite, like it's very much, it's all, all free actions is, is spending stuff. And you've got quite a lot of that to do. And it was a really big um, you know, tilt in that sort of way, which I hadn't seen before. Um, I found the draft to have very impactful decisions because you, know, you needed to balance all of those things and pick the ones that are important to you. And the map had, there was a lot of fighting on the map to get what you wanted. And oh, this that was, was, that was really, it's really awesome. It's very interactive. Yeah. At the end of each round, there's called a fair scoring. One of the cities mm -hmm. uh, will score an objective that could be worth, you know, 20, 30, 40 points if you get the right sort of combination, but you only score it if you've gotten your piece to that location 
or if you've previously built a house on one of the limited house spaces on that location. So the map is really tight. Uh, once people have built in locations, it really blocks others out. And that's a lot, it's a lot tighter than I'm used to seeing these days on Euro map boards. And it was what made it stand out. So yeah, lots of impactful decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing, nothing new, but it's the sign of when you do a lot of, when you can put a lot of things together that have been in board games before. You don't always have to innovate. No, you just yeah. have to balance and have something that comes out really well. There you go. Yeah, for me, that's what Toledo was this year. Uh, my number one game. Stella's number one. Least, least tribes of the Winds. Another Essen released by Le Boite de Jou. Le Boite de Jou. Le Boite de Jou, thank you, Tara. Tara's so good with this. Oh, is that what it means? Like in the, the box, box of, of games. Okay. Something. So, Tribes of the Wind, it is um, the, the artwork, you can see it's pitched by Vincent Dutre, and this is a, um, it's something unique because you, it is an icon heavy game, so maybe the first few like rounds, we just like learning the icons, what they are, but once you know, okay, okay, that means that, and you basically, what I like about this is that it's combo, your are comboing your actions of other players' back of cards. So their back of cards has got certain elements, so they have like five elements. It reminds me, it reminds me a little bit of Avatar because it's got different elements and it's got different actions. And you combo your actions um, that you, the cards you play based on how many other players. So let's say you have the most of certain things, so there are five things in play or something like that. Usually combo um, left and right neighbor and with the two players one you just combo off the back of the cards, draft yeah. cards. So yeah, there's lots of different way these car ways these cards work. Yes. It can be one that often they'll have like three options and this one might be yeah. count all of the yes. green cards that everyone has and you'll get the, the weaker or the medium yes, or and that too, yeah. higher one. Or you count your own cards only mm -hmm. or you look to see how many different mm -hmm. players have one. I think. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Ev if everyone has at least one, I think was one of them. And yeah. there was there was about eight or nine different ways that mm. these cards could combo. Yeah. And so it became quite an interesting like it was about having the right card or hanging on to the right card at the right time and working out when it was gonna make the most of playing it. There is just like constantly every turn I was like, okay, I'm gonna play this next and then things get changed, players get entirely interactive yep. uh, other players do different certain things like okay i'm not gonna play this anymore and it's more efficient to play this card instead so i'll play this card and you could get to a point where a player would do the temple action i think it was called it was one where they just discard three cards at once rather than playing one card on a turn mm -hmm. so it can completely you've always you got that like the risk cards. yeah you've always got the risk if you're just waiting for that one little extra thing to come into someone's hand you've got that risk that they all get uh Guess what? Burned at Burned. Once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's option as well to kind of like rep replenish your cards quickly, which is that one. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, you are building um, certain things. Like you, you can engine build your action with your leader card, and you achieve certain objectives. And then that makes your that's how you engine build basically. It's mm -hmm. it's awesome. And you, it's a timing element as well where you need to uh, build certain. Uh, sorry, the village. It's called I think is the village on your board as well yeah. and and it gives you bonus again let's give you engine build and they are so many things so many great things in there and I do like a game where you kind of like can almost see when the game almost finished but not quite sometimes it's out of your control when somebody built their fifth village so um, and there's a few other things that's happening there um, considering that, considering that it's actually a pretty simple game overall, it's the rules is not too heavy. Once you know what the icons are, yeah. Once you know what the icons are, you've basically got your your four your four resources are used for four pretty typical tile placement building types of things and moving things around as mm. well. So. And that is it. That's it. That is That's it. That's our top twenty. My top twenty. Taren top five. With and another 10 special mentions. So yeah, we've, uh, we've taken a lot of your time today, but thank mm -hmm. you for So uh, thank you so much for watching. Us. Yeah, staying with us. Uh, those. So what are your top five, top 10, top 20? 
what's new to you, what's different to you this year, please let us know in the comments. And is there anything yes. that we've brought up that you are surprised by yeah, as well? Yeah, good point. Um, I know sometimes, I know sometimes we uh, we pick a few out of out of nowhere, out of the, <laughs> the lesser well knowns. And if mm. there's anything that uh, uh, tickles your fancy out of the ones that uh, we've brought up here that maybe you weren't thinking about. Yeah, yeah, let us know. So uh, thanks again for watching and it will be really helpful to us if you can please hit the like button and subscribe to us if you haven't already done so. We do, and then hit the bell, you get notification when we have new videos. We do videos like this and we've got my shot and sweet, Terrence how to play, reviews. So all of this games that we mentioned, we have other videos, I'll, I'll link in the video description below so you can get more information about those games. Congratulations for all publishers that um, their games made our top games of 2022. Yes. And I'm also on Instagram, find me there as well, I share my board game journey here and there. And again, once again, me and Tarrant say Happy New Year and thank you so much for watching and staying with us. <laughs>